a feud with Kanye, bashing Marvel, and making her co-star cry. Friends made Jennifer Aniston famous, but there's a whole lot more keeping her in the news these days. In 2022, Jennifer Aniston and Sebastian Stan interviewed each other for Variety's regular Actors on Actors feature, and with the latter having just appeared in the dramatization of the Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee sex tape story, talk inevitably turned to the concept of celebrity. Remarking on the scandal depicted in the Hulu series Pam and Tommy, Aniston said it came right around the time the internet began shaping celebrity. And it was right at the time when the internet was just yeah. becoming. Aniston then singled out Pamela Anderson and Paris Hilton. It really sort of shaped so much of a new culture, kind of, about I this know. thing of people becoming famous for basically doing not nothing. Hilton decided not to respond to Aniston's blatant bit of shade throwing. It's fair to say that Jennifer Aniston didn't exactly do herself any favors during her Actors on Actors interview with Sebastian Stan. As well as throwing shade at Pamela Anderson and Paris Hilton, Aniston also took aim at those who have risen to fame on social media, saying, I feel so lucky that we got a little taste of the industry before it became what it is today. More streaming services, you're famous from TikTok, you're famous from YouTube, you're famous from Instagram. It's almost like it's diluting the actor's job. While some followers agreed with Aniston's stance, others believed that she was trying to act as a self-appointed gatekeeper. One person commented, Jennifer Aniston's parents were both millionaire actors embedded in the film industry. Their connections allowed for Aniston to have the career that she has. Not trying to minimize what she did in her career, but I actually think some of this move away from industry elite is good. Another person commented, People are so angry that the industry is more diverse, more inclusive of people from all backgrounds who had nothing but a phone to prop up to showcase their dream when their communities were probably underfunded and overlooked. Let's keep making them mad. Don't expect to see Jennifer Aniston donning a crime-fighting latex suit anytime soon. While promoting Apple TV Plus's flagship drama, The Morning Show, in an interview with Variety, the actor specifically called out the Marvel Cinematic Universe for diluting the quality of today's entertainment landscape. She said, It wasn't until the last couple of years, when these streaming services were just sort of exploding with this amount of quality, that I actually started to think, wow, that's better than what I just did. And then you're seeing what's available out there, and it's just diminishing and diminishing in terms of, it's big Marvel movies, or things that I'm not just asked to do, or really that interested in living in a green screen. Of course, with Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and the Marvels both underperforming at the box office, it seems as though the general public may now agree with Aniston about the saturation of comic book films. And that's not the only comment in the interview where she appeared to be ahead of the curve. Just a few years after Aniston called for a Meg Ryan comeback, Ryan starred in and directed the theatrically released picture What Happens Later. You're already living out your worst-case scenario. While Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt now appear to be the most amicable exes in all of Hollywood, things between them were inevitably a little more tense in the wake of their divorce. And a W Magazine spread in which Pitt and his new other half, Angelina Jolie, essentially declared their undying love for each other, didn't help matters either. Speaking about the 2005 shoot to Vanity Fair, Aniston admitted that she was just as shocked as the rest of us to see her ex-husband and the woman he left her for flaunting their romance so publicly, saying, I'd be a robot if I said I didn't feel moments of anger of hurt, of embarrassment. Am I lonely? Yes. Am I upset? Yes. Am I confused? Yes. Do I have my days when I've thrown a little pity party for myself? Absolutely. But I'm also doing really well. Aniston did admit she was giving Pitt the benefit of the doubt over claims he'd been seeing Jolie behind her back, but couldn't resist hitting out at his overall insensitivity, saying, I choose to believe my husband. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised by anything, but I would much rather choose to believe him. He makes his choices. He can do whatever. We're divorced, and you can see why. The 1997 romantic comedy Picture Perfect was one of the first star vehicles for Jennifer Aniston since Friends became a pop cultural phenomenon. But there was nothing perfect about the off-screen relationship between the actor and her on-screen love interest. In fact, she was so mean during the shoot that she left Jay Moore running crying to his parents. While hosting a 2011 episode of his More Stories podcast, Moore revealed that Aniston had wanted her then-boyfriend, Tate Donovan, to play opposite her. But when Moore was cast instead, she made his life miserable, he said on the podcast. As she's walking toward us to walk past us, she's pointing to Ileana Douglas and she goes, six guys they screen tested. Six. And then points at me and goes, the one guy I hate, that's the guy they hire. Him. 
Moore admitted he ended up heading back home after one particularly tough shoot to seek solace from his family. He went on, I drove to Verona, New Jersey to my mom and dad's house. I put my head in my mother's lap and I cried. My mom thinks I'm like HIV positive. I've killed someone. I go, she's so mean. I finally got a leading role, a romantic leading man in a movie. I'm number two on the call sheet. That's impossible. And she's just so mean. While Friends remains a permanent part of the pop cultural landscape, it has come under scrutiny in recent years for its questionable attitudes to race, sexuality, and a whole host of other thorny issues. Don't you have a little too much penis to be wearing a dress like that? But in an interview with AFP, Jennifer Aniston stated that she believes that it's unfair to judge the very 90s show through a 2020s lens. The star, who played Rachel Green on the hit sitcom, said, There's a whole generation of people, kids, who are now going back to episodes of Friends and find them offensive. There were things that were never intentional, and others, well, we should have thought it through. But I don't think there was a sensitivity like there is now. Aniston also hit out at the general concept of cancel culture while talking to the Wall Street Journal during promotion for the morning show, saying, I probably just got canceled by saying that. I just don't understand what it means. Is there no redemption? I don't know. I don't put everybody in the Harvey Weinstein basket. Shortly before landing the role of Rachel Green that would instantly catapult her to worldwide stardom, a then-relatively unknown Jennifer Aniston bagged the leading lady part in a horror movie that would spawn a long-running franchise. But it's fair to say that the actor isn't particularly proud of helping to kickstart the series known as Leprechaun. She told In Style, "...there's loads of movies where you're thinking, oh god, this is just, how am I going to survive this in my future? And then it's a cult something because it's so embarrassing." After clarifying that she wasn't referring to Office Space, the box office flopped turned cult classic she starred in at the turn of the century, Aniston confirmed she was referring specifically to Leprechaun. That same year, Aniston told The Howard Stern Show that she'd been forced to rewatch her cinematic debut with her future husband Justin Thoreau for fun, adding, "...it was one of those things when I tried to get that remote out of his hand, and there was just no having it." It's like, no, 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 <laughs> this is happening. Kanye West could start an argument with a paper bag, but it was still something of a surprise to see the provocative rapper get into a feud with Jennifer Aniston in 2020. Although, in his defense, Aniston did kinda start it. Yes, Aniston made an unlikely enemy when she took to Instagram to declare who she'd voted for in the presidential election. And unsurprisingly, it wasn't the rapper. Indeed, after naming Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as her political candidates of choice, the actor implored followers not to waste their say. Vote for equal human rights, for love and for decency. P.S. It's not funny to vote for Kanye. I don't know how else to say it. Please be responsible." Unsurprisingly, West didn't take this spot of shade-throwing lying down. The hip-hop star shared an article about Aniston's remarks on X, formerly known as Twitter, before claiming that his recent three-hour guest appearance on The Joe Rogan Show had got Aniston shook. He then further clapped back with the zinger, "'Friends wasn't funny, either.'" When Katie Couric was asked by podcast Everything Iconic with Danny Pellegrino about The Morning Show and the character Aniston plays, which is supposedly inspired by her, Couric gave something of a mixed review, saying, "...I think Jennifer Aniston is great. I think the character as a whole, I wish they had made her more charismatic." Couric's slightly salty response may well have been a response to Aniston's comments on a late-night chat show several years earlier. During a 2013 episode of Chelsea Lately, host Chelsea Handler told her close pal, "...Katie Couric was asking me on her show about your wedding, and I had to act like I didn't even know you were engaged because I didn't know that was out." Aniston seemed perturbed that she'd been the topic of conversation, responding, "...what's Katie Couric? Is she a legitimate journalist? Is she getting tabloidy? Wasn't she on the Today Show?" Things got slightly awkward on the red carpet of the 2020 Golden Globes when Jennifer Aniston chided Ryan Seacrest for his activity in the real estate market. Although she tried to pass it off as a joke, it was clear that Aniston was a little aggrieved with Seacrest for swooping in on her dream property. Oh, nice to How's see you. How's my home? Your home? <laughs> Do you want to explain? When asked to elaborate, the actor explained that Seacrest bought Ellen DeGeneres' home, one she had always wanted. After being told by the host that DeGeneres was on her way, Aniston responded snarkily, I know she's okay. coming, trust she's, me. Yeah. <laughs> You've been in contact. Well aware. Um, Seacrest tried to appease his guest by inviting her to the house before she asked whether he'd done any rearranging since buying the place. Do you still have the poker table? No. I, I don't know how to play poker. No, I won't we'll, ex to we'll get into it later. Jennifer Aniston better hope that she never has to travel on an American-owned airline again. Due to the less-than-flattering treatment she gave them in a TV commercial for Emirates Airlines, she's unlikely to be welcomed on board. The advert sees Aniston suffering from a bad dream in which she's forced to travel on a dimly lit aircraft that doesn't have shower facilities or every alcoholic drink on tap. There's no shower? 
Oh. And you have no lounge? <laughs> Thankfully for the A-lister, she soon wakes up to find herself wrapped up all cozily in a blanket inside a first-class Emirates cabin. It was such a nightmare. I was on a plane and it was nothing like this. To be fair, it's just a commercial. It's not like Aniston wrote the script. But hey, shade is shade.